Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Gun violence in the country is an epidemic and we've got to talk about what just happened last night and I've got a big question for you. Last night in Greenwood, Indiana in a shopping mall at 6 p.m. we heard that a gunman opened fire with a long gun rifle, we're not exactly sure what yet, in a food court which is a place that you should be able to allow your kids to play on the food court playground or focus on sampling orange chicken versus the garlic bread that the pizza place is going to offer you as a free sample and instead turned into a zone of war, of gunfire. And folks, what we want to take away from this is first of all, that three innocent people lost their lives, two were injured, and the gunman was killed. But what I really want to highlight, and I want to open a dialogue about, is the gunman dying and how he died. And do we think that there's a way how this gunman died could be replicated to end mass shootings almost as soon as they begin, sooner rather than later? That's the conversation that we want to have. Because generally, there are two arguments. On the left, there's the argument that what we need in order to limit gun violence is more gun control. For example, in the state of California, California believes that legal gun owners should have implements attached to devices like rifles that make it harder for you to put your finger around them, for example, like a trigger guard, for you to put your thumb around the handle so it's harder to use at extended periods of time. Yet that trigger guard is attached by two screws that any criminal would simply, or somebody who's intent on implementing a mass shooting would just unscrew because who's going to pay attention to that gun control law when you could just unscrew it with two screws? It, it, it seems silly and nonsensical. Or magazine limits that have plenty of loopholes that allow individuals to simply have larger cap magazines. But then again, why are we punishing good people with guns when it's bad people with guns that we should be punishing and bad people with guns don't care about your magazine limits. In fact, let's even attach larger magazines like 30 round barrel magazines to Glocks. Anyway, the point is gun control seems to be the focus of what our current governments, especially like those in California, focus on or New York. But something that we don't focus a lot on, which we really should focus a lot more on, is what I consider to be lawful gun ownership with training combined with a combination, a combination, very important, more mental education in our schools and services, mental education plus, and financial education and services, right, that's our plus, and more medical services to help people with depression and despair or other problems. We've got a society that has problems. We should be spending money on solving these problems. At the same time, encouraging lawful gun ownership. Why? Because folks, this shooting in this Indiana mall was stopped by a 22 year old legally carrying a firearm. It was stopped almost as soon as it began. This, this shooting, this horrible shooting in Greenwood, Indiana, could have been another absolutely horrific disaster. And it already was, with three innocent people losing their lives. But unfortunately, the mainstream media doesn't like to talk about more mental health spending or more uh, uh, positivity towards legal gun ownership. Like, let's talk about gun training rather than gun control, right? And the sad thing is, it seems like the mainstream media is burying the story. Here's the front page of the New York Times. No mention, no matter how far you scroll. Here is the front page of CNN. No mention, no matter how far you scroll. It just goes to show the mainstream media doesn't want to cover this story. Let's try to understand why, because it seems like it doesn't fit into their regular narrative. Let's instead talk about how we could have a legally armed society when they want to be and trained if they want to be at very affordable prices or potentially sponsored by the government. So that way we can limit further loss of life. Because here's the reality, and we're actually going to purposefully look at a left-leaning source for this. We're going to look at this New York Times chart and see that of mass shootings, 57% of them, 57% end before the police arrive, which suggests that if 57% of attacks end before the police arrive, 
more than half of the shootings will be over. More than half of all mass shootings will be over before the police arrive. And even if they arrive and you end up with officers like we had over at the Uvalde shooting, they might not even do anything. Now, I don't want to get political about what happened in Texas. I think it's terrible what happened in Texas. But the point is, just focus on the 57% of the time that attacks happen. How do they end most of the time? Well, folks, 75% of the time, the mass shooters get to kill so many people that they get tired and they leave the scene or they kill themselves. That should be flipped because only 25% of the time they're ended by bystanders. And that is because, in my opinion, even though the mainstream media is trying to say, look, only 22 uh, times out of all these attacks were shootings ended by a bystander with a gun, the mainstream media is trying to indicate that, see, guns don't help that much. The reality is we've got to ask ourselves how many people are actually actively carrying a gun legally and are prepared to use it. My guess is on a regular average day in a regular mall, maybe one to 5% of people actually have a weapon. If legally trained citizens who wanted to carry a gun and were allowed to get gun permits or, or even subsidies to help them properly train to use weapons, if these were the directions that our government wanted to bring society, maybe we could see five to 15% of people actually carrying, which then we would go to a chart like this, and we could potentially see that a substantial portion of these shootings that end up getting stopped by the attacker themselves because they're done killing people could get stopped earlier by bystanders with weapons. Now, that's an opinion, that's a thesis, it could be wrong, but I wanna know what you think. Is it possible that we could end more mass shootings if governments focused on things, first of all, like preventing mass shootings in the first place by focusing on mental education and financial education to try to prevent or treat despair and depression by increasing the services that we provide to people because people need services. That's what government's supposed to be there for. But then rather than punishing legal gun owners, how about actually supporting legal gun owners? So supporting legal gun ownership to potentially be able to have more folks capable of intervening in the event of mass shootings before the police actually arrive. I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know what you think.